Hi, I'm Matthew Harrison, president of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod here in Ladue, Missouri, where I serve as assistant pastor. Christ's promises are good for us here in Ladue and for all of you, no matter where you are. Let's go inside. Like so many of you across the country, our congregation is just now reopening. Our senior pastor, staff, and members of the congregation have been busy making preparations and once again, adapting to changing circumstances. Very many of you are in the same boat. It was terrific to have our church at least partially open last Sunday, but it was also strange to see half of the pews blocked off because of social distancing. While we're all looking forward to coming back together in the Lord's house, the timing will not be the same for everyone. It will be quite different too, as we spread out, wear masks, use sanitizer, etc. If you've not already, you may want to consult the cdc.gov guide for reopening churches for some practical guidance. Believe me, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord, Psalm 122. Luther was preaching on Epiphany. He said, in baptism, heaven is nothing but open doors and windows. It's wide open in Christ. Luther preferred that the words of institution be sung aloud, facing the congregation, wide open, because they are all the gospel, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Aside from all the things we miss at church, the people, the pastors, our friends, preaching, Bible study, even receiving the body and blood of Christ, having our churches closed or nearly so bothers us so much because we know the church is supposed to be open. The gospel is meant to be shared openly and in person. I've watched you. I've seen the myriad of thoughts from our LCMS people online. I've heard from many, including many pastors. This quarantine has been hard. It's been psychologically hard. It's been spiritually hard. It's been unsettling economically. And so I tell you now, the words of Jesus apply directly to you. Come to me, all you are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Don't doubt for a moment that Christ is using all of this for your good. All things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose, Paul promises. And nothing shall separate us from the grace of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And pastors, remember that when God puts you into the office of the ministry, he provides the grace to sustain you through every trial. And your weakness just makes that grace all the more evident. You know, Paul used the word kolopidze, buffeted. He was buffeted by this thorn in the flesh. That's a very striking and intense word. It's related to the word used for striking Jesus in the Passion Narratives. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I love the words of Christ to the angel or minister of the Church of Philadelphia in the book of Revelation. The words of the Holy One, the true one who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts up and no one opens. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming upon the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. For those who don't know Christ, and even for some who do know him, the quarantine may have been a time of deep fear and anxiety 
as confusing views have been expressed about all aspects of the virus. Deep questions about the existence of God, life, death, and eternity have been pushed to the surface. You and I know there's only one answer for this broken world, Christ. The reopening of our churches gives us an opportunity to reach out to those in our communities, to invite them into our sanctuaries to hear the word. Some will just show up, having found your church or your online services, or by driving past. Some are the neighbors and co-workers of your members. I'm so pleased to share with you that our Office of National Mission has been working to help you do just that. Together with our communications department, they've developed a media kit for your congregation to use as you welcome members back to worship and as you work to reach out and invite people from your community to join you. The kit is ready now, and our Office of National Mission is also gathering resources to help you reopen and care for your members and the people in your community. You'll be hearing more about this growing collection of resources in the coming weeks. God grant us the grace and faith of the Church of Philadelphia. I have set before you an open door which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.